everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at the Zenfone 2 Laser from Asus, and they've got a ton of phones on the marketplace, so I'll put a link down below uh, to this exact model so you can continue your research based on what I'm talking about in this video, because it's very easy to get confused by the very uh, numerous number of phones that they have currently on their website. So this is the phone here. Uh, this is kind of a mid-range smartphone, uh, pretty reasonably priced too. It's got a Snapdragon 615, that's a 64-bit uh, chipset, three gigabytes of RAM, you can choose between 16 gigabytes of storage or 32 gigabytes of storage. $199 for the 16 gigabyte version and $249 for the 32 gigabyte version. So pretty reasonably priced, especially considering where its performance is going to fall. So it's better than the uh, less expensive phones, uh, not as good as the high-end phones are, but it's right in the middle of those prices too. So I think where it performs is about uh, where it's priced. And we'll talk more about performance in a few minutes. I am very fond of, of the display on here. This is a five and a half inch uh, 1080 by 1920 display. So full HD display IPS with really, really nice viewing angles on it too. So uh, quite nice to look at. I think it's about 402 pixels per inch. Uh, so that is a retina quality display. In fact, it's better than retina uh, on some of the iPhones out there too. So really nice display on par with uh, other phones at this price point. Now compare this though with the quad HD displays that are in the flagship phones. But uh, quite frankly, it's very hard to tell the difference between a, a 1080 display like this one and a quad HD display on a screen this size. It really, you really don't need the quad HD to get a good looking display. And this one uh, certainly meets that standard for me. Uh, dual SIM cards on here too. And you'll see those in a second uh, so you can have it run on two different carriers it can only do one carrier at a time but you can load uh, two different sim cards if you're traveling between countries or you have a couple of different uh, carriers that you use throughout the month or week or day uh, you can switch uh, just within the menus between uh, carriers both for data and voice and it supports 4g lte on both bands i should note too that here in the united states this will support uh, at&t and t-mobile but not verizon and sprint it doesn't support the cdma uh, standard although it does support gsm which uh, at t and and T-Mobile use here in the United States. On the back here, you've got a, a, a 13 megapixel camera. There is a laser sensor here for autofocusing. We'll step through some of the camera features in a few minutes. Uh, you've got a dual flash here also for uh, getting the proper white balance while you're taking your flash photos. And there's also a volume rocker here. On the top, you have your standby switch along with a headphone microphone adapter up there, and then a USB port for charging as well as uh, OTG, so you can plug USB devices into it. Uh, it does not support uh, fast charging, those turbo chargers, so you will charge at uh, the normal USB speed. So it'll take a little bit of time to charge it, but what this phone has that many phones don't have these days uh, is a replaceable battery. So you can pop the battery out here, uh, keep a charged one in the bag and swap them out at will so you can uh, get a little bit more uh, flexibility on your batteries without having to carry around a lot of jumper batteries with you. Uh, you'll probably get about six to eight hours of, of you know, relatively decent usage out of it over the course of the day. So I would say a full work day for sure. Uh, the more you do with games and uh, higher end tasks, the, the more that will drain the battery. If you're in a weak signal area, that will drain the battery more. But uh, the battery life is about where uh, most of the phones that I've seen at this price point tend to play out. So it's a, a good battery life there and you have the option of the replaceability. Uh, you have two SIM card slots. You've got one here and one here. And then you can also put an SD card in here too to augment its storage. It'll support up to 128 uh, gigabyte cards on there. So I'm going to put the phone back together and we're going to take a look now at some of its performance. Now, the phone is running with Android 5.0 Lollipop. There's no word as to whether or not this will get uh, Android M down the road. Uh, it is pretty much a stock Android installation, but they have put on their Zen UI on top of it. So things look different. There's a couple of little apps that they've added, like this power and boost thing, which clears out uh, apps that are running in the background and whatnot. So there are some uh, Asus things that they've kind of put on top of it. I don't think these uh, UI changes by the manufacturers are really necessary anymore, but this does have it. It'll look a little bit different, but uh, it's not too much of a departure from stock Android. My only complaint though uh, is with the keyboard. They've put in their own uh, Asus keyboard, which is not as accurate or as easy to use as the Google keyboard is. You can of course go out and download the Google keyboard and put it on here to get it back, but uh, just a little bit of an extra step to uh, get what I think is a really important feature back on the phone. So uh, just be sure to do that when you get everything hooked up. Let's take a look now and see how it does with games. So lately my go-to app for testing out smartphones has been Goat Simulator just because it's one of these open world 3D environments. I guess you could probably say it's my go-to app, right? Uh, so it's running pretty nice on the phone here. It actually runs really nice on lower end phones too and I think that's 
uh, important to note because a lot of these uh, developers are targeting phones that are not as powerful as the flagships, including this one. So uh, these games are going to run great on here. Mo most of the Android libraries should perform quite well. Uh, again, you get the three gigabytes of RAM too, which will help with uh, some of the newer games that are coming down the pike. So while it runs Goat Simulator quite well, how does it perform on paper? Well, we get a score of 7,309 on the 3 d Mark CloudGate benchmark that we test on all of our phones. Uh, that clearly puts it above the entry-level phones we've looked at here on the channel and below the flagship phones that we've looked at here on the channel. But again, I really think that a majority of developers really target the middle uh, with their games and apps. And this is the middle and will be the middle for at least a year or two. So I don't think you'll have any real issues with compatibility. I think there probably are going to be some games that are really going to target those fancy flagship phones, but uh, most of those games will also have settings that you can apply to make them run on here at decent frame rates too. So if you don't want to spend four or five, six hundred dollars on a nice phone, uh, you can get this one for much less and still get really decent game performance. Now let's take a look at the camera and see how that works. So the camera on the phone is quite interesting. You can see the little laser going off right there. This is their laser focusing system and it does pretty well, you know, very quickly uh, focusing on things that you're trying to get uh, your camera fixed on. So it's not too bad for uh, getting all of those things done. I'm not sure if it's that much faster than other phones in the market, but it does feel you know, a little bit more responsive perhaps than other Android phones I've seen at this price point. Another thing I found interesting is that they have manual controls for the camera. So you can go into this manual mode here and start uh, doing things like the focus that we were doing a second ago, but uh, also things like shutter controls and uh, just about everything else related to the camera. The aperture is fixed at 2.0, but you can adjust the shutter speed and get kind of a real-time feedback as to what that's going to do to your photo. So as I'm adjusting the shutter speed up and down, uh, you'll see those, uh, uh, the exposure kind of change here. I have noticed though that you get a little bit of uh, wacky waviness here at certain settings on the uh, camera, both in uh, shutter speed as well as ISO. And this is not some issue with my uh, cameras here. This is what I'm actually seeing on the screen, those little wavy things going on there. But you do have a decent number of controls here and it's kind of nice to have that manual setting to it. Uh, the only problem though is that uh, when you are in that, let me go back to that uh, manual mode there. When you're in that manual mode, you will get a histogram normally at the bottom of the screen here, which you can see, uh, which gives you an idea of you know, what the exposure is going to look like on that photo when it's taken. But when you pull up the, uh, the settings here, that histogram goes away. So you don't get a lot of the uh, help in trying to figure out what the best uh, uh, exposure is going to be for your photograph that you really want that histogram for. So it would be nice for that thing to stay there uh, when you do have those things pulled up on there. Uh, as for video, it will do a 1080p video uh, at 30 frames per second max. It doesn't do 4K. Uh, if you want uh, stabilization, which is usually recommended if you're walking around, it will reduce the resolution of video uh, to 720p. So the video is not so great on here. Uh, image quality isn't bad. You can see a few sample photos I took here. Uh, the detail is good. It's actually better than the Intel powered phone we looked at from Asus a little while ago. So I was pleased to see with the, uh, some of the improvements in the details with the 13 megapixel sensor on here. Uh, not as good as some of the other phones I've tested. I think the Motorola phones have uh, slightly better cameras, but it is uh, a definite improvement over what I've seen before. They also have a low light mode that will shoot uh, at a lower resolution, but will give you a little bit better exposure in low light. Seems to work okay. It's not anything spectacular, uh, but it does uh, try, and I think it uh, will get you a photo sometimes in low light that might not be possible uh, on other phones at around this price. So I think when you compare it to other phones that are in that you know, $200 to $250 territory, uh, the camera does hold up quite nicely, although the video modes are a little bit uh, less than what might be out there from some other manufacturers at the moment. So how is it as a phone? Well, it actually sounds pretty good when you hold it up to your ear and have a conversation. I could hear people just fine and clear. Uh, they could hear me equally as well. Uh, there's also a speakerphone at the bottom, and of course you can plug in uh, headsets or connect some Bluetooth devices to it and uh, talk to your, your friends and family that way if you want to do that. Uh, the other thing to talk about here is recommendations as to whether or not this is a, a phone you should consider buying. And the answer is sure, it's a good phone, uh, performs very well at a reasonable price. However, there's also another Asus Zenfone 2. In fact, there's a bunch of other Zenfone 2s out there. Uh, but there is also one powered by an Intel Atom processor. Now, this is not a, a typical processor for an Android phone, but in my testing, it ran most of the apps that most people run on their Android phones just fine. In fact, it went better than fine as compared to this phone because that processor is almost twice as fast as this one, and that Intel-powered phone costs the same. Now, I reviewed it linked above, uh, so you can check out that review and get a little bit more in-depth with it, but uh, if you are in the market, it's definitely worth considering. Uh, the only differences are beyond the processor differences is that uh, that Intel-powered phone does not have a replaceable battery. 
Uh, you also have a, a camera that's not quite as good as this one is, but uh, if the camera and the battery are not as big of a deal for you and you really want performance, that other phone performs exceptionally well, so much better than this one that it's amazing that they cost the same, but they're just running very different processor architectures. So if you do have uh, some apps that go beyond some of the basics that you might find on Android, you may want to check compatibility first uh, to make sure that it'll work with it. But uh, this is a good phone, a good price, but there's also another good Asus phone at the same price that might be better. This is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.